You know, we've had the storms today. Had a good bit of rain the last couple of days. There's a reason why they call them rain frogs. Can you hear them? Oh, it's a wonderful sound in the summer. Here's the rain that the frogs last night knew when they were singing. They knew it was coming. So I'm quite sure that there's been lots of activity and lots more eggs laid somewhere. It's starting to frustrate me a little bit because <laughs> I don't want to disturb the eggs. I want to let them all have a good chance. Right now, before I get absolutely drenched out here, you see it's raining. Um, I wanted to uh, take a chance real quick and give a shout out to one of our little helpers. Her name is Bella. Bella is an awesome helper to her mother and her family. So Bella, here's your shout out on the little helper's tank. I tell you, I wish I could name one of these frogs for each, each of the little helpers. I wish I could. I guess maybe if I take them and put them in a jar, but that might not be such a great idea. Okay, it's raining and it's fixing to mess my phone up, so uh, I'll move on to something else. I had something planned for today, but the rain may prevent me from doing that. If not, if I just stop here, then this is a shout out for Bella and all the other helpers. Now look at the ants. You know, my place is um, left as natural as possible. Uh, I try to work with nature and bring my uh, items that I want for food and for whatever herbal needs that I may have. Um, I, I try to work out a partnership with nature, keeping her in mind first. What some of you are seeing here for the first time, uh, new viewers, you're seeing one of my little grow beds. In here, I've got a little comfrey. I've got uh, some plantain there, broadleaf plantain. And I've got a uh, passion flower here, a native, a native passion flower plant. It'll grow a wonderful pod full of uh, fruit, little, little fruit that tastes an awful, an awful lot like a Sprite. The plant itself is not edible, but those seed pods, the uh, inside the seed, the pulp, is um, I don't eat the seeds I spit those out and this plant is a wild thing so it grows through just being left alone to do whatever it wants to you know now I transplanted this one and a lot of people have trouble with them the main thing you want to do whenever you transplant one is get plenty of dirt did you know that this is national pollinator week I never knew there was such a thing so we're shouting out all of the pollinators, bees and butterflies, uh, certain types of flies even. Whatever is out there pollinating and, and that, that nature has to offer us, that's what they, someone decided this was the week to do it. I like to do that year round. Um, but the passion flower there, it, will, it is a host plant for two different butterflies. One is the uh, zebra tail butterfly and one is a Gulf fritillary butterfly. They both count heavily on that plant. Many people consider that to be a weed, but it's a wild thing. It's much needed, and those butterflies really count on that plant right there. Um, some species only have one. There's some, some plants and animals only have one plant and one animal as partners. There are some of those like that in the world. And if we lose the animal, we lose the plant. If you lose one, you lose both. Now, I don't think that, um, that we're in any danger of losing the passion flower um, or the butterflies anytime soon. But at the rate we're going with people not taking care of their land in whatever way possible with nature in mind, we could lose another species or two. We lose them every day. So, National Pollinator Week. Now, what we've got here, just a few...
episodes ago, I found an amazing caterpillar and decided to um, capture it and watch its growth. Well, something happened. <laughs> it had some of its growth. I had it in a large jar uh, and uh, we were, I was watching it and I thought that it would be in, in the uh, terrarium for a little bit longer. I was about to make an enclosure for it um, and I went to look for it and I couldn't find it. That's because the little booger has already pupated. And it, this is very well camouflaged right now. It looks like a little branch sticking out of this, uh, this limb. So what I'm going to do, I've got a little bird cage here, or I guess you could put something else in it. But this is going to be housed in here. This is an Easter, Eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly. That is a mouthful to say. Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. It's going to be in here. The total pupation time is about uh, 10 days to 14 days. I think we're already into day four. So over the next week and a half, this little booger is going to be pupating out. Or it's going to be hatching out or escaping, you know, the uh, chrysalis here and become a butterfly. I'm going to do my best to watch him. Uh, I already missed him pupating. I hope I don't miss him emerging. And I'm going to try to get that on film and share it with everyone. I think it'll be a really neat thing if I can capture that and show it. I've seen it on other people's videos. Now, <clears throat> and that, that'll be neat, especially with it being pollinator week. So, check in with me again later. and Maybe I'll be, I will have been able to capture that on film and share it with you. So, um... I guess with uh, bringing to the frogs yesterday, oh my goodness, I just stood up. Bringing to the frogs and the song of them and wanting to give people a few, uh, a few shorter videos uh, that they can watch easily, not feel like they've got to pack a lunch. I think I'll end it for today. Now, I do show an awful lot of natural things on my property and I do try to have all of my content to be of a nature that's wholesome, nothing trashy. But my channel is not uh, targeted for children. It's an adult. This is adult content. Learning about your pollinators so that you can make your property into a more natural place. So today from Homestead Aquarius, I thank you very much for watching and hope you see you again tomorrow.